wish we had more time for all this. Um, but we can learn a lot of uh, what Nick's work has been through the internet, either uh, Facebook, Washington County Tea Party, or if you get your name on that email list, Christine is the hard work, artist working person in the room here. And she uh, fires out emails like crazy and uh, to keep you up to speed, especially in busy times. Um, there's something that, that Nick mentioned, that, uh, and that is about this, I don't know what the bill was called, but not being able to use public funds to grow the state. I'll tell you a little story. You guys recall a year ago, there was a vote for a quarter cent tax in Washington County. Benton County voted it down, and this was to expand busing. And I'm telling you, they're coming back. They have new leadership that's going to be more careful. They're coming back, and they're going to be pushing the same agenda. So we're going to have the fight all over again. Tyranny never sleeps. It doesn't. We just got to keep going. Well, this little story about how we found out about this. Debbie and I, in the red back there, we were a little upset when we found out that they're using county resources to push this busing expansion, right? Because I did freedom of information on the buses and the school and that sort of thing. We found all this out. But they're spreading propaganda through the schools and all that sort of thing. So Debbie made an appointment with the uh, county attorney and we went down there and talked to the county attorney and we're there about three or four minutes and he says, no, it's legal. They can use, and in fact, it's worse than we thought it was. They maybe didn't know it, but they can use county money to expand, to promote the increase in size of the state. I mean, that's, that was just mind-numbing to me. And we left there, it's kind of like, well, we just got to keep quiet about this, hope they don't find out that they, they got an open checkbook on this stuff. But anyways, the fact that that bill was shot down, or I mean, that was, it was passed, it was, uh, was it Nate Bell the one that was championing that one? And that's good that that's gone, they can't use it. So we can do freedom of information, we can catch them using state or county resources, we can turn them in. Um, now, pass off to Glenn Gallus here, um, chairman of the uh, Garland County Tea Party, and, uh, um, the Arkansas First project, right? Yes. All right, and then uh, another new one for the petition drive. So yes. Take it away, Glenn. First, let me try with this. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it's the old drill sergeant in me. I, I've learned how to talk very loud, and 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 uh, and, and so. I just, I hate being tethered to, to, to a microphone. Yes, Joe Sargent! Yeah, there you go. Um, I want, I, here's what I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask each and every one. I, here's, I only ask one thing. Give me 20 minutes of your undivided attention, and if I can't change the way you think about what happened in Arkansas, then I'll drive the other three and a half hours back, okay? Um, I came here three and a half hours because I think what I'm going to say is probably the most important thing that you guys need to hear. And I'm going to start with a story. I remember when I first moved to Arkansas. I moved back to Arkansas in 91. And I did the, the, the unforgiving sin of buying a house during the day. Now, if any of you ever, play, I used to, I was born and raised in Chicago. And one thing you learn, you never buy a house just looking at it during the day. Why? Because the neighborhood changes at night, right? <laughs> so I bought this house, sight on scene, beautiful, had beautiful potential, couldn't believe my eyes, and within 12 weeks had eight murders within an eight block circle of my house. Long story short, I got mad. Started a neighborhood watch. Um, ran for uh, uh, city director, got crushed. Uh, nobody knew me from Adam. You know, I raised three hundred dollars. The local lawyer raised seven thousand dollars for a non-paid political position. Of and course, he won. Chicago. That's right. <laughs> and uh, but that was that's not the end of the story. The end of the story was it didn't change what I wanted to accomplish. From a neighborhood watch to a nonprofit organization. We were able to take a neighborhood. I bought seven houses, took them off of the rental market, 
converted them into single family dwellings. Uh, we we, we uh, volunteered with the police department and, and went through uh, pawn tickets. We did all kinds of community act. We built our own park with private money. Had the land donated, built a park, a community park was great. Anyway, long story short, not to pat myself on the back, I won the Presidential Community Service Award back in 1991. It's a nationally recognized award from thousands and thousands of community. And I tell you this because that's what got me started. I realized that I did not need to be elected. I realized that I didn't have to. I, I, I was just, I, at that time I was an employee of a plumbing company. Uh, I was nobody. I was nothing. You know. You know. But I was motivated enough to want to change my community, and I did so. And I'm telling you that everybody in this room, you guys are the elite. You guys are the special forces. You guys are the ones can accomplish the goals that need to happen. And I want to tell you this because I believe this. Number one, everybody should know what the motto for the state of Arkansas. Everybody knows what that is? It's called right now, populace. That means the people rule. Okay? In the Arkansas Constitution, it says all the authority comes from the people. Our Constitution says the government of, you know, not the government, the declaration, the government of the people by the people for the people. The government only functions with one thing, and that's people. It doesn't say the politicians, okay? It doesn't say the power brokers, the special interests, the people with the money. It says the people. Folks, we have the power to make a difference in Arkansas. How many people were disappointed what happened at, at the 89th legislature? Okay. How many, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. did I tell you, understand I'm, I'm, I'm a radio talk show commentator, I'm really snarky, so if, 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 I, if, if I offend somebody, I automatically, it's like my preacher said, you know, lift up your feet, I'm going to step on your toes, okay? I believe the, the, the GOP, the Grand Old Party Republic, GOP stands for Government Obesity Preferred. Okay? We can make a difference, okay? But we have to be able to tell the truth. Okay, and the truth is, we the people have failed. And we have failed because we have not told the politician, the elected official, what we want them to do. I would be willing to bet because I am guilty as charged that everybody would hear say, well, I'm against big government. Yes? Being against something doesn't stop something from happening. Being for small government makes a difference. Ask what, what Nick talked about reevaluating. We don't tell our guys to do something. I'm gonna, you know, the guys that want to sit back and be quiet, and not do anything. Well, I'm just gonna stop bad legislation from happening. They do that, but that didn't help us reduce the size of government. Now, did it? I'm against new taxes. Well, how about? we start making them do away with taxes. Yes. I'm for less taxes. Right. Because I want to evaluate the person that I elect on whether or not they reduced the size of government, not stopping big government, although that's important. I want them to reduce my taxes. You understand that this year, they're bragging on the fact that they gave each Arkansan a $3 tax break. While they gave one company in Arkansas over 300 are going to give them, because 125 is just the beginning, it doesn't, it doesn't incorporate the, the free education, doesn't incorporate the, the gimmies from the city. It, it's, it's a total of $300 million to one company. You got three bucks. How you feeling? You got three bucks. Oh, and by the way, your legislators got an additional $300 million in GIF money to give to their favorite charity, whoever that might be. And go ahead and look that bill up. It's, it's General Improvement Funds, and you'll get a whole laundry list of special interest projects that they gave away, and you got three bucks. I, I want you, you will not change politics in Arkansas until you change the way you speak. You will not change the way you speak until you start fighting for something. You've got to start fighting for smaller government. Do we agree on that? we got to start fighting for less taxes. 
We got to start fighting for more liberty. Guys, we're losing our liberty every single day. Every single time the government creates a new regulation, a new law, a new way to stop you from having your personal liberty. It's not about this collective liberty junk. That's communism. It's individual liberty that we have to protect. It's individual liberty that we have to fight for. And by the way, the best way to define how much you value liberty is how much you're willing to fight for somebody else's. We've lost our liberty because we stopped fighting for others. You don't believe me. I'm very, I was very, very involved in the liberty movement uh, uh, this, this past election cycle. And one of the things that really bothered me about libertarian, capital L libertarians, as far as the party's concerned, is their argument was all about, you know, drugs, right? A lot of it was about, you know, I, I, I want, you know, it should be legalized. And I can go into a long debate about it. But here's the problem. You are not going to get the, the primary voter who is the, from the age of 55 to 65 to vote for your agenda. Because you were only interested in fighting for the liberty that you wanted, not fighting for the liberty of the senior citizen who has just been told you can't do this, you must do that, or voted for Obamacare, so now you get the death panels and all these people telling you how and what your health care is supposed to look like. If you want to prove your love for liberty, it's defined by how much you're willing to protect the liberty of others. So I'm telling you, you have the power. There's so many things that you can do. One of the things that you can do, and, and, and this is, you know, we're talking about primaries being the most difficult. I said this this last election cycle. I said the biggest challenge that we will have, we being the Tea Party, we being liberty-minded folks, the biggest challenge that we're going to have is going against the guys we just elected. I said to them, you go look up my blogs. You'll see exactly what I posted there. So that's going to be our biggest thing because they're going to disappoint us. And again, I go back to point number one. The reason we disappointed them, we didn't tell them to do anything. We listened to their campaign rhetoric. We listened to how they were just adamantly against Obamacare. We listened to them how they're going to, they're, they're going to fight against big government. They're going to fight against, guess what we got? We got Obamacare. We got government expansion. You didn't get any tax cuts. You know who got the lion's share of the tax cuts? Special interests, manufacturers, agriculture, all these people. Guys, we're the ones that pay the taxes. You understand a business pays no taxes. It is simply a tax collector and a funding mechanism for the government to, 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 to collect and, and gain taxes. That's what they are. Who pays for it? The end user. The end user always pays the taxes. How much, how much did you make last year? Three dollars. Three dollars. Not even enough for a Starbucks coffee dog on it. Three dollars is what we got. So we can make a difference. Let me tell you some of the tools that we have in our toolbox. One of the, one of the tools that, I've, that I, I'm going to implement and have is what's called the referendum. In Arkansas, we have the power to, and, and by the way, you have also that same power locally at the county level and at the state level. You have the power to refer or reject, so to speak, any legislation that's on the, you don't like a tax that you got, have a referendum. I don't like this law, I'm going to have a referendum. Now, it's based on whether or not the Attorney General will approve the popular name and ballot title, and I'm on my second rewrite, and hopefully he'll approve it. But 10 days from now, okay, I will know whether or not we will be able to start the process of collecting signatures. We will have to collect 46,000 signatures, actually about 53,000, so we get down to 46, all right? 1,000 signatures, and then we get it on the ballot. And then I believe once it's on the ballot, the 72, 71 percent, depending on which polls you use, that are against Obamacare, will vote it down. And then it will be up to the legislators to do what? To veto it. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm really excited about the opportunity of passing this thing and hoping and praying that some of those legislators will want to make a vote to override a referendum of the people. We have the power. Let me tell you what else you have the power to do. 
you know, we, we hear a lot about campaigning and primaries and elections. Did you know that you can create a committee that's against a politician? Did you know that? You can actually create a you can actually create a campaign committee, collect funds, okay, say this is the campaign against Joe Snuffy. Huh? You don't even have to raise a dollar. All you have to do is file the paperwork. You want to get their attention? File the paperwork. All you have to do is go to the Secretary of State's office and you can download it and you can challenge these people. It must be done. Folks, we can challenge these people. You have to let them know. You have to hold them accountable. You have to tell them you did not like what they have done. And now I will finish with this. What have they done? They have created the largest expansion of government in Arkansas history. Guys, do not let them distract you with all this stuff. Okay? Well, you don't understand we did this. Well, you don't understand we did this. All right? We're for what? Less. We're not against big government, are we? We're for? Is this, is this less government? No, it's the largest expansion of government in Arkansas history. A court, if you extrapolate the numbers, of course, the funny thing about government is you can't, they don't have hard numbers, am I right, of anything. You have to extrapolate. You have to go to the census and then compare it to the housing purchase. Then compare, just to get, you know, one of the most frustrating things in 2010 was that we couldn't get a piece of legislation passed just to count whether or not we had illegal immigrants. Because Arkansas doesn't count. The only way that these, like Fair and these other people have come up with numbers, is they've had to do like I've had to do, is extrapolate the numbers from the Census Bureau, compare it to the numbers from, from DHS, and compare because they don't count. We have to start, where was I going with that? I have no idea where I was going with that, what about counting? But anyway, <laughs> they can't be, huh? Arkansas. Oh, they, they, but they don't have any hard numbers, okay? we have to understand that if we're going to fix this, it has to be on real basis with real numbers and the real number, extra, oh, I know where it's going. So let's, extra, you know what I extrapolated the numbers to be? About 5,000 extra government jobs, which is about an 8% increase, okay, in government employees in Arkansas. Now, by the way, we had the seventh fastest growing government in U.S. And now we're going to increase it by about 8%. We're also going to be spending, okay, an additional 90, what million, something like that, 89 billion, something like that. It's in an exorbitant amount. You know, again, back to the numbers, they don't, you can't really get the real numbers. You have to just kind of figure it out. But in either case, between 89 and 91 billion dollars of additional spending is going to flow through the state coffers, flow into the pockets of hospitals, healthcare organizations, insurance companies. Notice I'm leaving out a very, very important person. Who's it not flowing to? You guys. Okay, because at the end of the day, this was about controlling the cost of healthcare. You cannot add 200,000 more people with no more doctors. You can't add 200,000 people with no more beds. You can't handle 200,000 more people without any more doctors. What you're going to do, and everybody can attest to this. Come on, is there anybody here that doesn't have to go at least 20 minutes early to the doctors? Then you wait for an hour and a half before the doctor sees you. Then the nurse comes in and checks all your vitals and sits you Bare butt cold on a, on, a, on a, come on, I know what I'm talking about here. And then you wait another 20 minutes. He goes on, takes the clipboard that he got from the nurse and says, okay, now tell me what's wrong. I see you got this, you got this. Okay, you know what? Take two aspirin and call me in the morning. <laughs> now add 200,000 more people to that process. 
it's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt the seniors because they're cutting Medicare to provide for Medicaid. It's going to hurt seniors. That's, they've already started cutting Medicare. I lost my doctor. My wife lost her doctor because they want to stop taking Medicaid because mm -hmm. they can't get the reimbursement from it because it's already overburdened. It's already underfunded. They already have too many people in need. And now we're going to add 200,000 more. This is the largest expansion of government in Arkansas history. It's the largest influx of your cash, your money, your dollars into the government system in Arkansas history. It is not private. There's nothing private about it. The plan that it's going to be is called the Silver Plan. The Silver Plan came directly from HHS and said it will provide. Okay, now this is Medicaid now. We're going to expand Medicaid. We're gonna it's going to provide dental care. Oh, yes. Nutritional care. Oh, yes. Preventative health care. Oh, yes. You say, well, some of that sounds good. Yes, but do they have it now? The answer is no. Will it increase the cost of the health care to everybody who pays in private insurance? The answer is yes. You can't increase the population of health care uh, uh, needs. Okay. Raise the amount of benefit that you receive and expect it to cost less. It's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt more importantly. Here's, here's the end of the day. I, I've said this from the beginning and I'll bring it all circle and then I can, we, can, we can start doing questions. But here's the deal. At the end of the day, who ends up paying for it? You guys, okay? You guys in the pan. The end user pays for it. You are the end user. So, of course, the big companies, they're not going to worry about it. Why? Because they're actually going to be able to offer their employers a better insurance plan. Does that make happier your employers? Nah, that's negotiable. But, hey, it's a Benny that they can do. On who else? Who's dying? Yours. Okay, so they get a better health plan. The hospitals are going, great. I'm going to get all this money into my health care system so that I can pay the health care professional more. Do you realize that I, 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 I remember that, I think it was the guy from Cato that said that there's, I think he said that there is 35, I can't remember, I'm going from memory, but we're not even at full occupancy in our hospital beds now, okay? And so they need to fill the hospital beds so they can get the reimbursement so that who gets the money, not the healthcare profession, who gets overworked? Because just like you guys get underserved, who gets overworked when you add 200,000? The healthcare provider, the nurse, the LPN, the doctor, the dentist. These, imagine this. How much information did you hear about a dentist in Obamacare and Medicaid expansion? But guess what? It's in there. Did you think a dentist provide, uh, decided that he's going to have to expand his practice now? Okay, with all these people. Because guess what? If I get that free health care, I'm in. Folks, they didn't prepare for it. They didn't do it, and it's not private. And at the end of the day, what did we get? The largest expansion of government in Arkansas history. And who pays it? You pay for it. What did they promise us? They promised us, I, I heard, just like Nick heard, I mean, I, some of you guys are probably, this is the first time you've ever heard from me, okay? But some of my friends know that I've, I almost spend every day down at the legislature in 2010. I ran for Congress in the 4th District. I spent mm, at least two times a week in this last legislative cycle. I report on the radio live from the Capitol and get the interview. I'm very involved in the game. And so I heard every campaign speech, you know, because they all want to be on the radio when they're running. And they all want to tell you what great things and wonderful things they're going to do. Well, let me tell you the great and wonderful things they were going to do. They were going to stop Obamacare in its tracks. Yeah. Am I lying or am I dying? Yeah. We're going to stop Medicare expansion in its tracks. We're going to 
slow the growth of government. Come on. We're going to lower taxes. Three dollars. Guys, we were duped. And not intentionally, but we were duped because we didn't tell them what we wanted to do. So, like his plan, like my plan. Number one, you got to take the power back. 67% of the people that are at the state house learned how to be and govern by being a county <coughs> or a city councilor. A county official or city councilor requires about 2,000 to 5,000 votes depending on the size of your county. You can make a difference. But you have to make it locally. How many people do you think they, they have given up at you know talking to the president? Given up talking to, let me see, your guys is Bozeman, right? Given up on that one? Okay. Uh, who else is yours? Uh, Womack. Womack. Oh, my buddy. <laughs> I crucified him the other day on a radio, but that's another story. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's your buddy. Okay. Has he, is he listening to you? No. Okay. Do you think he'll ever? How many of you guys got the form letter? Come on. Come on. I got the form letter. Thank you so much for contacting me on this very important issue. Me and my staff know that this is an important issue and we're going to look into it and I promise you we're going to do the best that we can to make sure that the conservative values that we believe in are going to be exemplified in my city. Come on! We, in, in, in Arkansas we call that bovine excrement. Okay? So, we can make a difference, but we have to raise them up. Yeah. This stuff isn't going to fix overnight. We've got to raise them up. We've got to elect aldermen. We've got to elect JPs. We've got to start really, really fine-tuning our election process when it comes to state representatives and state senators. We can make a difference, but it starts with you. It doesn't start with them. So right now, don't wait like Nick says. You know, he's, he, no, look at him. I mean, come on. He, <laughs> I'm wearing cowboy boots, he's wearing those, those fancy, you know. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> you gotta go to work. And the work is, you gotta find those people who believe in smaller government and will pledge to shrink the size of government. Who believe in less taxes and will pledge to lower your taxes. And then finally, the one that believes in less liberty, who will stop and reverse regulation and legislation so that we can have the government of the people, by the people, for the people. That's my spiel. Yeah.